Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Michael Barletta back with another Tropical Update. This time, we're talking about Tropical Depression 11. Before we get into it, if you guys can make sure to like and subscribe, it'll really, really help me out. No, I haven't been active the past few days, but there hasn't been much going on weather-wise, but I'm back now talking to you guys about another tropical depression that just formed in the Atlantic, I believe, yesterday. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're talking about Tropical Depression 11 here. Currently, we have maximum sustained winds of 35 miles an hour moving west at 15 miles an hour, um, pretty far away from any land masses. So right now, not too much of a concern for any land masses. 35 miles an hour, that is only 4 miles an hour lower than Tropical Storm Force, so this storm is very close to being our record-breaking uh, J-storm. It'd be the earliest J-storm ever. So this storm is expected to do that. As you could see from National Hurricane Center, expected to track to the west, turn to the northwest over night tonight into tomorrow, and strengthen into a tropical storm becoming record breaking. So let's take a look at the current satellite. Currently looking pretty healthy. There was some easterly shear impacting the storm. Now you could see where the lower level center currently is to the eastern part of the convection. The convection is looking really, really good, getting some negative 80 degree uh, cloud tops, a lot of negative 70 degree cloud tops right in here, right just to the northwest of the center. If this center can move a little bit, catch up to that convection, I'm certain that we'll see a tropical storm tonight. Regardless, looking pretty good. Some pretty nice outflow to the uh, northwest. Not a whole lot going on to the southeast, but I expect that lower level center to travel a little bit further northwest, catch up to that convection. It'll look a little bit nicer come tonight. Looking at the current shear, uh, really not a whole lot going on. Not a whole lot of shear. Really in a Pretty good environment for wind shear right now, 15 knots or under. As this moves to the northwest, wind shear will become a little more of a problem. And if you looked at the National Hurricane Center track, it has this storm strengthening, 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 and then it gets into this region and weakens, uh, mostly due to wind shear and some dry air. But as of right now, not too much wind shear going on. I expect some of this cloud cover and convection to be able to wrap around to the southeast later tonight. Definitely what we're going to need to see a tropical storm tonight or or early tomorrow, which is what I'm expecting. Now, taking a look at the dry air, same thing, uh, hence why this storm is moving to the northwest and is expected to weaken once we get uh, in this region. A lot of dry air, Saharan dust, but as you can see, a lot of this outflow is currently protecting the storm. So the core right now is being able to strengthen while the, while the outflow of the storm uh, is currently really making like a little bit of a shield uh, protecting the core. Now, if there was any dry air to the southeast, you, you see there's no outflow over here, so dry air would be able to get into the core, but there's really not not much going on to the southeast, just to the northwest, and the storm is doing a pretty good job at protecting itself currently. Taking a look at the latest tropical model guidance, they all initialize right around the same spot, meaning that there's probably a really well-defined low-level center. All these models have the storm tracking to the northwest. Then we do get some divergence. Some of the models bring it a little further to the south, just north of the Dominican Republic. Some of the models curve it way out to sea, just Bermuda's over there, just east of Bermuda. National Hurricane Center currently taking the middle road along with the HMNI and the HWRF, two of our big biggest hurricane models uh, really split in the road right now. So we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on the exact track. Further south uh, brings a higher impact chance to land, um, but we're expecting the storm to pretty much weaken, possibly back down to a depression from a tropical storm once we get in this phase. Regardless, still worth watching uh, over the next few days as this storm does get a little bit closer to land. Now, looking at the tropical intensities, as you can see, all of these models have it right below tropical storm force intensity. Now, most of the models, if not almost all of the models, bring this storm into weak to moderate tropical storm intensity before dropping it off, exactly what the National Hurricane Center has, exactly what I believe of the, as this storm is in a good environment but, but gets into a less favorable environment over the coming days because of that shear and dry air. We could see some of the models really don't strengthen the storm or, or get it just really below tropical storm force intensity. We'll see. I expect this to get to tropical storm force intensity. Some of the models don't think so. The majority of them do. Taking a look again at some more of the tracks, these are GFS ensembles. The strongest members want uh, track to the north, and that's not something that 
we haven't seen this year. We saw that with ECIS. The strongest members were on the northern envelope of guidance. Same thing here with Josephine would be the next name. Um, strongest members to the north and east of most of the guidance and taking it curving it out to sea, well out to sea, even east of Bermuda. Some of the, but a lot of the weaker members uh, bring this a little bit further west, but pretty much kill it. You could see 0 to 20 knots, some 20 to 30 knots, but well below tropical storm force strength. So even if this does track a little further west, right now we're not believing that it would pose any major impact to land. That could always change, but it's looking good that this will be a low impact storm if any, if it even does get close to land, which we are not expecting it to at this time. So taking a look, this is a little bit in the longer range. We could see um, the European models. These are what they do with Josephine right in here. And then um, we're getting another signal for another storm developing in the main development region. We could see Josephine moving to the northwest. Um, and, and we're having a, a pretty strong tropical wave moving west. Just something to keep an eye on. This, this is about 200 hours out. Really just something to really keep an eye on. The the Atlantic, we're nearing peak hurricane season. Uh, once you get into August, September, that's peak hurricane season. Definitely something we need to watch. These waves behind Josephine looks like a very, very active year, especially the second half of August into September, looking extremely active. And this is just another thing pointing to a, a potentially extremely, extremely active year. May even get into Greek letters, which has only ever happened once before in 2005. So potentially a very, very active year ahead. Um, and the European ensembles are showing us that with multiple waves coming off Africa, tracking west towards the United States. Nothing set in stone yet, but just something that we're going to need to watch. And that's all I have for you guys today. Quick video, quick just little update on really what's going on in the Atlantic Ocean. Not a whole lot, but something uh, just to talk about, keep an eye on out there. So if you guys haven't yet, please follow my Twitter, my Facebook, at Mike B. Weather. That's where I post a lot of my updates. Also, if you guys have not liked or subscribed, please do so. It really, really helps me out a lot. Um, leave a comment down below what you guys are expecting for hurricane season. Have an awesome day, and I'll be back soon with some more content.